50 miles south of the ancient and fertile Romney marshes. For 25 miles along the coast and 10 miles inland, this vast marshland barely rises above sea level. Cut off from the rest of the county, this is another wonderfully secluded landscape. Across the flatlands, it's wild and windswept, and there are really hardly any trees. John Betjeman wrote about here that the sky is always three quarters of the landscape. He was right about that. The Romney marshes are crisscrossed by a network of waterways and boggy ditches. It's the perfect habitat for a diverse community of animals, including, I'm told, a loud but rather shy visitor from across the channel. What are you up to here, Owen? I'm, I'm looking for marsh frogs. Uh, Owen Lation is the local wetland officer. So marsh frogs then, yeah. they're, they're not native, what are they? No, we know the story about these, these creatures. They were introduced in 1935 by the wife of the local MP, <laughs> Mr Edward Percy Smith. And, he, and she bought 12 frogs, put them in the garden pond, and they promptly all escaped onto the Romney Marsh. How would I spot one of these compared to well, the standard frogs? That we well, the, mar the marsh frogs, are the, they're the largest frogs in Europe, so oh, the, the, big. Big, the big ones. Right. Um, but the small ones, yeah, they're very bright green, okay. um, and they like basking in the sun. So these will be on the side of the ditches, so we should have a good chance of seeing them today. So we need to go creeping along? We need to be very careful. They're very wary, um, so we've just got to be very careful. Should we start heading that, yeah, way? that way? let's go that way. Let's go quietly then. The frogs are skittish. Getting close to one is going to take intuition and stealth. <laughs> there we go. Disturbed every frog in the land. <laughs> the smallest one of them would cross back there. <sighs> Marsh frogs are distinctive looking and sounding. They can grow up to 17 centimetres long with powerful hind legs, which make them excellent jumpers. The male frogs have prominent air sacs beside their mouths, and in breeding season, they create an unholy racket in the marshes. Visitors to the Romney Marsh are not quite sure what it is when they first hear it. They think it might be like a duck or something, and, and they look in the ditch and they can't see any birds, but actually it's this frog which has got this you know, giggling, croaking, quacking kind of mating call. And another name for them, the laughing frog, I think is quite apt, really. <laughs> I'm going to creep round here. Oh, oh. Yeah, we... <laughs> That was one. Actually, <laughs> just a flop. We didn't get a good view of that I one, didn't did see we? anything. I just saw the flop. <gasps> oh, another right one. under me. <laughs> I can't believe I walked right past it. They're, they're definitely laughing at us, aren't they? <laughs> they are laughing. With each female marsh frog able to lay up to a thousand eggs, you'd think it'd be easy to find a few on their breeding ground. But I can assure you, it's not. They've just got their eyes poking out at the top, they're looking at us, and they'll just dip down, and there'll be those little ripples on the water. Oh, there's one here. Yeah. There's one here. That's right here. Yes. Look, he's big. He's big. Whee! <laughs> I've seen my first marsh frog. Brilliant. On, on the Romney Marsh. Yeah, the right place. Oh, there's another one! 